You know, guys, it's easy to say that you're the protector in your family. It's easy to say that you're the provider in your family. It's easy to say that you're prepared for anything that may come to hinder or to obstruct your family. But are you? Do you have a list of lists, a list of lists that will help you be prepared for when disaster comes? Today, I want to talk to you about part two of my list of lists. Men in the Arena Army, we salute you. Hey, guys, thanks for listening to this episode of the Men in the Arena Podcast. I'm Jim Ramos, your guide and host of Spotify's number one podcast for Christian men, leading you to your best version in that stress bubble of life and beyond. Welcome to today's show. Hey, guys, I want to jump into the meat of the podcast today. Uh, last week, we talked about five of my nine Bs that are on my list of lists. So my, my list of lists in case of a disaster are nine words that start with the letter B. Last week we talked about having, uh, we talked about the word beans, which is having a deep larder or a place to store all of your food sources and ways to capture food. Uh, the number two category is bed, which is all things related to your retreat or where you would stay and where you would live, your domicile. The third B is bullets, which has to do with everything related to security and food gathering, food killing, fishing, uh, birds, small games, big game. And then the fourth category is what I call band-aids, which is everything hygiene and medical related. The fifth category is your body slash your brain. And one of the things I didn't talk about last week is I want to talk about this week are what are a couple of things under body and brain that you could use to encourage you and to give you a perspective of what a preparedness situation might look like. So I know a lot of you guys uh, don't read per se, but you maybe watch Netflix or watch a movie. So I got a couple movies that you might want to look into. It really is almost a Christian movie. If you if you follow it to the end is the book of Eli. Man, that is a with Denzel Washington. What a great book. Uh, to give you an understanding of what an apocalyptic situation might actually look like. Another one is The Road, which is a, a great movie also. It's very dark uh, and gloom, but it gives you a real perspective of what uh, a grid-down type of situation might look like. A couple books I really enjoy. I, I love the book One Second After by William Forston. It talks about uh, an EMP strike in America and what that would look like uh, to our world. Another great book is by James Kunstler called World Made by Hand. I also love uh, anything James Wesley Rawls puts out. Uh, he wrote a fiction book called, well, these are fiction, obviously, a book called The Patriots, which is a, a fun, easy read. He also wrote a book called How to Survive Teo to Te Waki, which stands for The End of the World as You Know It. And in that book, he basically, that book is about a list of lists that you can create for a situation like this. I think those are great. Also, uh, Holly Drennan Deo wrote a book called Dare to Prepare. She wrote several, actually, and those are exhaustive books. They're like textbooks. So uh, there's a lot of other resources out there, but those are some of my favorites and the ones I've actually worked through. So I want to go today, I want to talk about the nine Bs, but I want to focus on six, seven, eight, and nine. So number six was not a category I had until this year, but the more I researched my list of lists, the more I needed, I realized I needed the sixth category. And this is simply batteries. Batteries, which includes solar charging of batteries. It includes every kind of battery uh, I can use. I've actually switched over from purchasing batteries in store uh, to purchasing only rechargeable batteries. And then those batteries can be charged by a solar powered panel and you can get those they're all over the place and they're actually fairly inexpensive. Uh, also, uh, generators, which I have zero generators. That is on my two purchase list someday. But uh, three fuel generators, you know, anything to generate power uh, to your home or to whatever. Uh, and also, you got to think about batteries. You got to think car batteries. You got to think batteries for everything that you have from your cars down to your phones. And the last thing would be fuel. So, how are you going to fuel your equipment? So, those are things that would fall under what I would call the battery. Uh, category. The seventh B is what I call barter. So we have to think about this in a situation where we have a grid down or a supply chain breach for three years, let's say, we have to think what will be valuable 
to obtain during that season. Now, all of you know from recent experience that toilet paper is a big barter issue, right? That'd be a big barter one. Another thing that I am collecting personally is one pound, uh, one pound jars or uh, containers of Morton's iodized salt. Another thing that I gather is I gather uh, magazines to some of the weapons I own to have more magazines than I need so that I could barter those someday down the road. Along that same line would be ammunition. Uh, there are certain ammunitions that we would we collect that would be barterable. I, I personally like to collect NATO rounds, which would be a 308, a 30 odd six, nine millimeter, 45, 556. Ammunition that is highly used by others out there that is highly accessible. 22 ammunition, shotgun shells, that type of thing. Uh, cigarette lighters would be are critical. Um, distilled alcohol. Uh, can be used not only for pleasure but also for medication. Uh, I actually fixed a, uh, I fixed our fish pond with uh, old brandy that I, I somehow found and I hate it. I don't drink it, and I used it to get the rubber prepared to fix a patch in a pond. So you can use alcohol for many many things. Uh, the, so those are some of the things I use for barter. But you have to think barter. I personally, and I know this goes against what a lot of people think. I personally think gold and silver are poor choices for bartering. I don't think people are going to want to be cha- char- uh, trading in money. I think that money sources will be things that are utilitarian that actually carry intrinsic value. And I don't think in a grid down situation, gold or silver really does. So uh, that's that's my perspective. Uh, the eighth category is what I call business WTHTF. So you can figure out what those initials stand for. Basically, it stands for when the Schumer hits the fan. So, you know, if we're in a three year situation where, you know, we're in a grid down situation and you can't go to your software company, uh, you can't go pump gas, you can't work in a restaurant, you can't you do anything with electricity, you've got to figure out what can I do to add value. And so for me, I'm going, hey, man, I could pastor a church. You know, uh, I can sharpen knives. There's so, super a lot of ways out there to sharpen things that you don't require that doesn't require electricity. Maybe you can, uh, uh, you know, have a canning business or a candle making business or a soap making business. Uh, maybe you can uh, have a reloading business or how about selling seasonings? Uh, maybe you could. Um, there's a lot of things you can do. Uh, you know, post hole digging. There's a lot of things that you can do. Trench digging. What are the things that you can do? Uh, Carpentry, obviously. What are the things that you can do in a situation where you're in a grid down situation and everything's instantly reverted back to 1900? So what skills can you bring to the table? Obviously, uh, if you're in the medical industry, uh, dental industry, these are massive needs in, in the world. So what are the things that you can bring to the table that would help the community in which you're living? So the last thing, category nine, uh, the ninth B is what I call bad. Bad. Bad is an acrostic I made up for better at it or die. So these are things that if not acquired, these are miscellaneous things that if not acquired, it could make your life miserable uh, or it could make your life end. So these are things that I want to have on my list. So I have a personal list here. And on my personal list, I have reading glasses, blood pressure medications, aspirin, multivitamins, shaving razors, things like this. Uh, also there's transportation. So, uh, what will your transportation be? Bikes, quads. Uh, if you have an EMP strike, having a rig that can run, that is made, let's say pre 1980 type of thing, uh, that's on plugs and points and not fuel injection. Uh, but it has, um, a, a carburetor instead. So I'm not a car guy, but these are some things I've learned and you know how about fuel storage which i also i think categorized under batteries and then miscellaneous i have a a a friend who almost lost her house in a recent storm because they didn't you know they needed sandbags so do you have sandbags those can be used for many many things uh bolt cutters which is also known as the world's uh universal a key uh you know uh, a bolt cutter is a universal key so bolt cutters three fuel generator electrical adapters for all your phones computer and anything with 110 wood stoves uh, lime for your outhouses for burying dead things. Uh, how about a blacksmith's forge, a trade, a treadle sewing machine, welding materials, heavy duty shelving, hand water pump from, you know, you could pump water, uh, UV water treatment, uh, f- for ponds and different things like this solar refrigerator. Uh, that's a personal thing for something that, for someone who has a medical issue that we would have to have, uh, refrigerated uh, things for. So, 
What are the things that if you don't have, it would really make life tough? So I call that my bad list. Be added or die. So anyway, those are my nine B's, guys. Uh, and that's my actual list of lists. It's an actual list that I have. And I actually have it categoried. Black means I've already got everything I need from that category. Uh, red is something that I, I have not even started collecting yet. Blue are things that I've accumulated but I need more of. So beans, bed, bullets, band-aids, body slash brain, batteries, barter, or business, and bad if you don't have them. So guys, I hope this episode has helped you. We have one more left in our series on daring to prepare and make sure guys that you are doing more than just uh, listening to this podcast. If you have not subscribed yet, please, please, please subscribe. You help us climb the charts when we do when you do that, and it helps us reach more men and families because we know when a man gets it, everyone wins. Until next time, feel the wet sand on the arena floor. Hear the deafening roar of the crowd. Taste the sweetness of victory. Smell the stench of battle. Get in the game. Get dirty. Grind it out and be a man.